Hello, welcome to Nourish Technologies. This is Sudhakar Sharma. You are watching MVC video sessions. In our previous session, we discussed about uh, how do we create an MVC application and uh, we learnt about the basic infrastructure of MVC application. That means uh, what are the files and folders present in an MVC application. Now today we are going to see how do we work with the MVC application, how do we initiate, how do we start with MVC application. In order to understand uh, how do we start with an MVC application, you can watch the previous videos where we discussed about the basic architecture of MVC, how the request comes to the application and how the request flow happens. I will just give you an uh, overview one more time about the request flow. This is the actual request flow of ASP.NET MVC. First, the client request comes from a browser and when the request comes from the browser, the routing engine is responsible for identifying the request and uh, it will select a controller. In MVC applications, always the client request will be a delegate request. Delegate request means pointing towards a function. So in MVC, ASP.NET MVC, the client request always comes to a controller. Controller comprises of collection of methods that respond to various client requests like get, post, put and delete. So controller comprises of a set of methods that are responsible for sending a appropriate response to every client request. So when request comes to controller, that controller will invoke the method. After invoking the method, the method returns any view or method is responsible for communicating with the model. It gets the data from the model and it will pass the data to the view. So the basic request flow shows how the request comes and how the request is processed and how the response is sent. You can look at the high level design of MVC. So the high level design of MVC, you can see a HTTP request comes to the pipeline. It will make use of routing and this routing will verify the request and if the request is appropriate for the application then it will first create the controller. After creating the controller authentications and authorizations will fire up. Then after authorizing, authenticating the user, model binding happens. After model binding, the methods are invoked and the results are sent as a response to the client. This is a high level uh, view of uh, how MVC works. Now with this basic overview and uh, what we learnt in our previous session, how the MVC architecture works that is the controller model and view. Now we can start working with our MVC application. So what is the first step in MVC applications? Generally in ASP.NET web form applications, when you are creating an ASP.NET web form application, the functionality starts with creating of pages. So generally we add pages for a page the page controller is added, we design the page, define the logic in the controller and uh, we render the output to response. Now in MVC, the client request will not come to any page. In MVC, the client request is always to a controller. So in MVC applications, we have to first start from creating a controller. So let's see how do we create a controller. Before creating a controller in MVC applications, 
you have to know about some basic points about controller the first point is controller controller is a class it's a c sharp class controller is a c sharp class it's just an c sharp class usually it contains it contains application specific logic application specific logic actually controller process process the request controller will process the request by handling communication with uh, the model and uh, view that means controller is responsible for processing your request by communicating with the models and views so controller is a c sharp class it contains application specific logic it is responsible for processing the request and handling communication between model and view a very important is mvc handlers mvc handler can identify identify a controller class can identify a controller class and process the controller class on request only when the controller class is having the suffix controller it is having the suffix controller so it is mandatory that every controller class in mvc must have the suffix controller that means the class name that you define for controller it must have the suffix controller mvc handler cannot identify the controller class until or unless it is having the suffix controller so it is mandatory that every controller class must have the suffix controller that means our controller class looks like this we have a public class any name such as home and the suffix will be controller controller so it is mandatory that every controller class must have the suffix controller so this suffix controller is required for every controller class however whenever you are referring the controller you need not to define the suffix you have to just use the name of the controller here the name of the controller is home so when we physically define the controller we have to use the name home controller but when you are virtually referring the controller then you have to define just home so every controller must have the suffix controller and as of now it is still a ordinary c sharp class how it can become a controller class and start responding to user interactions it can become a controller class and start responding to user interactions by implementing implementing by implementing controller base class by implementing controller base class this controller base class is defined is defined under under system dot web dot mvc so a c sharp class will start behaving as a controller class only after implementing the controller base class so in order to acquire the features of a controller every controller class must adopt that controller base class so that means how a controller class will be now so we have to first import a namespace system dot web dot mvc then we create a class class by name some home controller and it has to inherit a controller base class controller base class now this is your controller so now we professionally defined and configured a controller so we have to create a controller class by implementing this controller base class so these are all the basic rules for a controller so controller comprises of application specific logic and in mvc applications the client request comes to controller in that case so the request will be processed by controller 
So always we have to start from creating a controller. Actually in MVC projects, in MVC applications, so you can add controllers, add controller in two ways. One, you can add controller with, with a scaffold, scaffold and you can add controller without scaffold. Later we will discuss about scaffolding in detail but as of now I will just give you what is scaffold. Scaffolding is nothing but it is just a process of generating the code and UI according to your requirements. That means according to your specifications and requirements now the logic and the UI will be automatically generated. So this process is called as scaffolding. So in MVC you can add a controller with scaffolding and without scaffolding. Without scaffolding that means manually you have to configure everything. With the scaffolding you have to just mention what you want then it will define the logic automatically. Let us see the two methods how we can add a controller without scaffolding and with scaffolding. Let us see first how do we add a controller uh, without scaffolding first we will see. So without scaffolding how to add a controller. So let us go to the solution explorer. There we have a controllers folder. Now as we discussed that controller is a class. Now add right click and add a class. So we are adding an ordinary C sharp class but we are defining a name for this class. It is important that you can give any name such as I have given products the controller name but it is mandatory that it must have the suffix controller. Every controller class must have the suffix controller as we discussed. So we are creating a class, it is an ordinary C sharp class as of now. So but we want to make it as a controller then define the suffix controller. Then click on add. Now an ordinary C sharp class is added into your controllers folder. Now how do we make this as a professional controller now? First I need to import the namespace using system.web.mvc so that all the MVC libraries are available now. Now products controller should implement means we are inheriting a base class that is controller. Now this makes our controller ready. So we have just added a controller and our controller is ready to start with. This is without scaffolding. Now let us see how do we add a controller with scaffolding. What is advantage of scaffolding? It will generate all the logic for you automatically. So let us go to solution explorer. In solution explorer right click on controllers and uh, go to the option add and select add controller this time. Now when I select add controller it will prompt you the option add scaffold. There are so many templates for controller. We will select an empty MVC controller and uh, click on add button. Now this is asking the name for the controller and I will give the controller name as uh, some categories and you see the suffix for the controller by default it is controller. Now I click on add. Now a controller is added for you but this time you do not need to import that library inherit the controller base class. You will observe that automatically everything is configured for you. So the namespace is defined, the controller base class is implemented and your controller is ready. It is having some predefined code generated inside it. I will clean up for that just clarity but this is how we defined a controller. What is advantage of using scaffold? All the logic which is required for controller it will generate that logic. So we can add controllers in two ways. So without scaffolding and with scaffolding. Without scaffolding you have to manually add a class implement the controller base class by inheriting the controller. 
and uh, with scaffolding you just choose an empty controller the logic that is required for that controller will be automatically generated for you. So, first step our controllers are ready to start. Now, what a controller contains and how it responds to the user's request, we will discuss in the next session. Thank you for watching videos.